So our major goal is to try to figure out how to make HIV infected children, um, how to put them into a state of remission such that they won't require a lifetime of antiretroviral treatment. So how are we doing that? First, by studying viral reservoirs in these children where the virus continues to persist under effective antiretroviral treatment and then to figure out ways to clear those reservoirs in kids with established HIV infection and in those who do not yet have established infection to try to see if we can block reservoirs or reduce these reservoirs from forming by very early treatment approaches. Okay, great. Um, so what are the biggest challenges you face with your work? The biggest challenge is the population we work with. It's a pediatric population. As you know, these studies are very intensive with respect to the amount of blood that's required to conduct these studies in using the sophisticated tests that are available. Issues around the fact that the virus can hide in tissues, meaning that we may have to extend our studies to include looking at tissues in these children. I think really the, the difficulty is the, the population that we're dealing with, the young age, right. small size, and limitation in the amount of blood or materials we can get to really study reservoirs yeah. and cure. And I think comparing to adults, it's hard to take a large volume of blood, for example, from an infant, and it's hard to do tissue biopsies too, right? It is. It's hard to do those things, but I, I should point out we have had success in studying these reservoirs to date in children where you know, we've had over 15 years of experience in using small blood volumes to quantify viral reservoirs in children. Mm -hmm. But we've not been able to extend it to the level of tissue reservoirs. With the recent case in a Mississippi child and now breakthrough very new male, you know, albeit after a long period of time, mm -hmm. 27 months, this really puts us in a position to begin discussions in terms of looking at tissue reservoirs other reservoirs in these children. So uh, you did raise the issue of the Mississippi child. Maybe you can just tell us uh, briefly what has recently happened. So as you know, the Mississippi child was our first case of, of viral remission. We weren't sure the child was cured, but certainly the child had gone two years off of antiretroviral treatment without having rebound. But in the last two weeks has rebounded. Virus has reemerged in the bloodstream of that child. Can you confirm for us, it took us two years is a very long time to be off therapy um, with no rebound. That's the longest ever recorded in anybody, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. I don't think there even an HIV-infected adult who's been off treatment where there's no detectable replication of confident virus or HIV-specific immune response uh, present and have been able to go off or stay off treatment for two years or more. In fact, it's 27 months in this right. child, and we think every month counts yeah, um, yeah. In, in this case. So it is a first uh -huh. in yeah. the field. It's unprecedented for right. HIV infection in general, and certainly for pediatric HIV infection. Right. I mean, 27 months is a long time in the life of this child. Um, so I, do you think there is something unusual about the immune system of this child, or maybe something unusual about the virus? So to using the standard assays that we have available in terms of um, measuring immune responses in children, we've used the standard assays looking for antibody responses and T cell mediated immunity. And obviously this child had no detectable HIV specific immunity. Mm -hmm. But there may be other immune cells that may play a, may have played a role in control of virus in this child that we have not yet identified. Um, certainly we're gonna continue to follow this child to try to understand better why this case of remission. Mm -hmm. But my own assessment is since this child had no evidence of active virus producing cells off two years, nearly two years of treatment um, with negative HIV specific immune responses really supports the idea of viral persistence in a quiescent cell rather than immune control of a cell that's continuing right. to produce virus. That makes sense. Um, so can you tell us how has AMFAR been involved in some of the work that you've done? Well, you, um, you know, Rowena, that um, AMFAR did fund our first pediatric uh, study of um, characterizing viral reservoirs in children on long-term heart. We got a pilot grant from AMFAR to support that work. And in the 
context of, of that funding or during that funding cycle is when the Mississippi baby and the case emerged. We were just beginning to develop our cure again with the pediatrics, so certainly uh, seed money that was a catalyst um, for, for cure research.